Our next physician is one of the world's preeminent pancreatic cancer researchers, Dr. Daniel Von Hoff, a world-renowned physician and scientist who has dedicated his career to the study of cancer and treatment methods. Dr. Von Hoff's efforts have significantly advanced the field of medical oncology. By expanding access to new drugs, speeding up drug development, and showcasing the value of translational cancer research. A distinguished professor of molecular medicine at TGen, Dr. Von Hoff is also a Virginia G. Piper Distinguished Chair for Innovative Cancer Research and Chief Scientific Officer Emeritus at the Honor Health Research and Innovation Institute. He is also the Margaret Given Larkin Endowed Chair in Developmental Cancer Therapeutics at Hogue Hospital, a professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic and the distinguished professor of the Department of Medical Oncology and Therape Therapeutic Research at City of Hope. Please join me in giving a big warm welcome to the esteemed Dr. Daniel D. Von Hoff. Thank you very much. Please, everyone, eat. Uh, and maybe you can listen a little bit. Thank you. Appreciate the introduction. And Urquhart, I really appreciated your presentation. Tonight, I thought I'd call this the base path to a cure. The commissioner, uh, Bud and Sue Selig, had a lot to do with our interest in baseball, so I'm so glad you're here tonight. I call it the tiger strategy. So this is the tiger strategy against the disease. Of course, that video gave us some incredible reflections. No matter what we do, it's not enough yet. And uh, for all the brave folks that we've lost, but also to be thankful for everybody who's here tonight to do the only thing we know how to do, which is fight back. So how could we do that? Well, Roger, the Cinemagwitz Foundation is very special. The medical mission is an urgency to apply the best science to detect and cure the disease. But there's also a, a special appreciation for what patients and their families are going through. And Roger always says, if not us, then who? And I don't read the journal every day, I must say, but uh, in the lifetime betting achievement I saw in the journal, uh, congratulations for that passion to practice. So thank you, Roger. Now recently was the 50th anniversary of our wedding day down the road here. And you can see Ann and I walking down the aisle. We look pretty young and thin and, uh, at that time, uh, but a short distance from here. And also, it was my 50th anniversary graduating from medical school. Now, I hesitate to say something personal like this, but Ann and I are still married, thanks to her. And I was, yeah, thank you, I was and still am the shortest uh, person in my medical school class. I might be eminent, but I'm still short. Okay. okay. Well, 50 years ago, you know, we, there wasn't much to be done. Nobody wanted to go into oncology because this thing was, uh, any cancer was so bleak. But now, we thought we'd never see this because there's a 33% decrease in death rate, even though cancer is more common as we age. 4% uh, decrease per year, not fast enough. The largest increase in survival we thought we'd never see is breast cancer, lung cancer, and prostate cancer. These are not death sentences. And there's been some increase in five-year survivorship. It was 2% in 1991, 12%. But as Urquhart mentioned, the earlier situation, if it's localized, is between 44 and 88% chance. So there's a chance. But let's examine the greatest success story there's been, which is breast cancer. The declining death rate and cure of breast cancer with more than 85% of people, regardless of stage, uh, alive at five plus years, and of course, the earlier diagnosis, the better. And the question is, what was the strategy? How do you win? So I like to call it the tiger strategy. T is therapy to improve survival for stage four. That's what had to be done in breast cancer. You had to get things active against stage four disease. G was to give the therapy to patients earlier with stage one, two, or three, even as Dr. Evans has shown before surgery. E was early detection, and thank goodness we had mammograms. And then R was raise awareness. And the question is, can this be done for pancreatic cancer? Well, as Urquhart said, because of science and clinical trials, 
we have T, finally, we have T. These are therapies for patients that improve survival who have stage four disease. We have NABPAC gem which came here from the Sina Magowitz. We have Fulfirinox, thanks to the French government. We have uh, Naliri Fox, thanks to Stand Up to Cancer and Bud and Sue, that, that particular nudge to get the funding uh, from Major League Baseball. Very much appreciated. That gave us a new regimen against the disease. And if you have the right molecular profile, we have several very specific ones, but you can see like Olaparib is for BRCA mutation, which is only about 5% of patients. But with testing the tumor, you get dramatic responses if you have those. So now we have at least some tools to work with, uh, but we need more for stage four disease. And Urquhart mentioned it briefly, this re revoking immune privilege. And to put it a little more simply, is pancreas cancer thrives because our immune system can't see it at all. And we've discovered a way to, to actually break down that immune privilege. And he mentioned to you this RIP, revoke immune privilege, this addiction. And I put a picture here of Dr. Hahn, who's discovered a way to get rid of that addiction and take out this master switch called transcription factor 2H. This is a master switch, a great new target. And for the first time, somebody asked us this morning, will there ever be no chemotherapy? And we think this trial could give a chance of no chemotherapy for patients with advanced stage four pancreatic cancer. Well, the G, the, thank you, Dr. Hahn, for sure. The G of TIGER is to give these stage four treatments to patients with stage one, two, and three disease. This changed breast cancer area, and it can be done now in pancreas cancer to reduce the tumor before surgery. Who would have thought of that except Dr. Evans, who invented it? And it's been practiced by Dr. Sai and Dr. Borisansi. He deserves applause. It was tough. And we have, as you heard, the TGIN triple. Uh, Dr. Borisansi is very promising to reduce it even more before surgery. And the Sina Magowitz Foundation, you heard, is sponsoring this personalized neoadjuvant. And I said you're going to hear more about it. We were a little out of order, but you did hear more about that trial, and Doug hopefully will mention a little bit more yet. The E of TIGER strategy against pancreas is earlier detection. Unfortunately, we haven't had a mammogram. There hasn't been the science to do it. But things are changing very rapidly, and there are now some very promising early detection methods. For example, there are now multiple blood tests for all kinds of cancer. GRAIL, Immunovia, Delphi, four and others, and we're testing these new methods for early detection from the blood of some of the people who participated in the clinical trials and were treated at Honor Health and Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, our approach has been to look for little things, you can see them there, called extracellular vesicles, EVs, not ETs, but EVs that are actually butted off tumor cells and you can detect them in the blood. This is really a liquid biopsy. And you saw a little bit of this, but this is a curve. They call them ROCs. And if you're perfect, if you have a perfect score, you can detect all cancer and tell when you don't have it. It's a 1.00, and it's a left angle. So that would be perfect. And you can see here, with an NIH grant, and again, the volunteers from Sina Magowitz funded trials, that uh, the usual marker has an AUC of 0.88, that means we'd have false positives and false negatives, but it was supposed to be 1.0. But putting together the EVs, it is now 0 0.99. And the big surprise, I think, to Doug, Susan, and many of us was that in stage one and two disease, it's also 0 0.99. So we're getting there. We all have even better blood tests for early detection, and certainly there's a way to achieve a high rate of cure if you treat the patients early. You might say that's obvious. But the problem is we can't test everyone. Uh, it's still relatively rare, thank God, pancreas cancer, about 10 per 100,000 is not rare to people here tonight. It's incredibly expensive yet, but we are developing risk factors. And I put them down here, family history, I won't go through them all. Even O blood type is a risk factor for pancreas cancer. We think it has something to do with the immune system or new onset diabetes. The risk factors that have been recently discovered is your microbiome. Taller people are at a greater risk of developing all cancers because they have more cells in their organs over time, more cells at risk. 
And there's also the fact that we are born with some genes which are now known as bad luck genes. You might have one or two you're born with. You probably need three to six in that cell to cause cancer. And how do you get them? It turns out the new discovery here is that each of us is born with a mutational clock. It helps us evolve, and that mutational clock is ticking. If you're a smoker, it goes 2.8 times faster, so the mutations accumulate faster. So smoking and other risk factors, and we're trying to put all this together at Tijin and City of Hope and Honor Health, all these risk factors together to give you a profile, should you have a blood test or not. Now I'm making a proposal tonight to give Roger more trouble, uh, but uh, he's used to that, and that's to have Cena centers for early detection. Where do people go to get this expertise? And these centers would have to have appropriate expertise to assess your risk, to explain to you, is it a good idea to have a test or not? and to continue to sharpen the criteria of who should be tested. And as you heard, ERCUT has already set up a center. It's been very successful. We need to have more of those centers so more people can be tested. Now the final R in the slides here is raise awareness like crazy. And this is one of my favorite pictures here. Now Cena passed away, as you heard, and Roger said, when time stood still, my heart was ripped out. Who else has been doing more to raise awareness than the Sina Magowitz Foundation? I don't know of anyone. There have been many recruited, you'll see many pictures here, recruited to this mission of awareness. Even cars have been painted for it. See, I think the battery might be going here. It's a mission with a, a special urgency. Some people have dressed up as Superman and, and Wonder Woman. With incredible volunteering of time and treasures, which we incredibly appreciate. And so many have stepped up to the plate. Us clinicians here want to say thank you to you. Thank you may not be enough, but we say thank you. So in summary, we salute the pancreas cancer warriors here tonight. You inspire us, keep up the fight. And remember, I had to put a German shepherd in here somewhere. Be aware and be an awareness guard dog against pancreas cancer, awareness. Encourage people to get risk assessment for pancreas cancer and if indicated, get tested. Our theme tonight has to be earlier detection, easier cure. Thank you.